immunotherapy would probably be the mainstay of the treatment of metastatic disease. Immunotherapy is virtually always given in the veins. Sometimes it's sub-Q injection, but almost always or subcutaneous or an intramuscular injection. But most of the time, it goes into the intravenous line. It can be given at intervals of anywhere from two to six weeks. And if you took a bunch of melanoma cells, you put them in a plastic plate, you threw in uh, a bunch of these immune drugs, drugs like nivolumab, pembrolizumab, ufolimumab, durvalumab. They're all MABs, they're all monoclonal antibodies that block uh, substances. If you threw a whole bunch of that stuff in a test tube with a bunch of melanoma cells, nothing would happen because the immune drugs don't directly kill the melanoma. If you threw chemotherapy drugs in, it might kill the melanoma, at least to some degree. Chemotherapy doesn't work real well with melanoma, but it works to some degree. But if you took some human immune cells, threw them in the test tube, threw in the melanoma cells, then added the checkpoints, the checkpoints would disinhibit the immune cells and they would kill the tumor cold. So it's an indirect action, and those drugs are very interesting because they work very well. Prior to the advent of PD-1 antibodies or combining PD-1 with CTLA-4 antibodies, metastatic melanoma was a death threat. If you got stage four melanoma, you're a dead person. Today, it is not the case. I get plenty of postcards from patients that I haven't seen in 10 years because I've left the institution where they were cared for. And they say, hey, just wanted you to know I'm doing great. You treated me 10 years ago. I ended up, I ended treatment just seven and a half years ago. I was on your clinical trial, blah, 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 blah. Just wanted to let you know I have a new child. We're doing great. Da, 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 da. Pleasure to speak to you. Let me know your email address. Obviously, 10 or 11 years later, I would say they were probably cured. So for the first time, we now begin to think about cure when we think of our immunotherapies. And some of them can have a beneficial effect. With immunotherapy, our, our goal of treatment is potential cure. In fact, it used to say, you know, prolongation of life, palliation, comfort care. Now when you click on a medicine, you have to put all this stuff in the computer. It's all electronic with the electronic medical record. If you click on a melanoma treatment, now it says, the goals of my care plan are cure, likely to cure, not likely to cure, etc. So we find ourselves in all frontline settings saying, we, we think we have a likelihood of cure. Uh, that's our goal. So the immune therapy, again, as I told you, if you took an immune therapy drug and threw it in a test tube with the tumor cells, nothing would happen. But they come in two varieties. There's a so-called immune checkpoint inhibitor, which disinhibits the immune system and cuts the brakes. Or you could have something that pr directly promotes immunity, like interleukin-2, uh, a so-called cytokine, meaning it's a substance that's made by immune cells in tiny quantities, but we give it in big quantities. And those cytokines, like interleukin-2, which is an FDA-approved drug for melanoma, can be successful, although they're pretty toxic. Uh, the checkpoint inhibitors have their own toxicity used in combination, but as a standalone agent, PD-1 is not very toxic at all. The key characteristic for me is what proportion of patients uh, drop out or uh, have to discontinue the therapy due to toxicity. And actually, it's only about 10%. Um, and in our business, that's regarded as a pretty darn good number. So the immunotherapy can be used alone, so-called PD-1 antibodies. In melanoma, we have pembrolizumab and nivolumab. They're like twins. They're identical in their effectiveness. Or what we like to do is combine two different drugs that are immune, ipilimumab and nivolumab, for example. Ipilimumab blocks a substance called CTLA-4. PD-1 blocks a substance called PD-1, pro program death one. And when we combine the drugs together, we get the best results we've ever seen. In a study where you either combined two drugs or had one drug, one or the other, so it was a three-arm study, randomly allocated almost 900 patients to that study. It was clear after 18 months that patients were beginning to plateau in survival. The plateau of survival was superior for the combo versus either drug alone, and dramatically so. And at five years, 52% of the patients in the combo group are alive and well. And that's pretty darn impressive. That means the average survival is more than five years. That's unheard of in melanoma. 
and that's actually just fantastic. Immune therapy for melanoma is not the only therapy, and there are other types of immune therapy other than checkpoint inhibition. We do adoptive cell therapy. There's a big trial that's going to the FDA of adoptive cell therapy where cells are removed by a process called a leukophoresis from the body. Those cells are then cultured outside the body, and when they expand to a certain number, the patient then gets seven days of chemotherapy to wipe out his bone marrow. Then the cells get given back. Then you get interleukin-2 to nourish them and cause a ton of toxicity. And that is so-called adoptive cell therapy. We think that has a lot of promise. It's been pursued at the NCI for 30 years. I actually tried 31 years. And I was one of the guys who treated the first patient who got it there back in 1988. But at any rate, that's another completely different kind of immunotherapy, as well as the, adopt the checkpoint inhibition, or the direct, we call it agonistic antibodies, that is antibodies that directly stimulate instead of disinhibit. So you have all kinds of different immunotherapies that can be done, and used in combination, they're probably going to be more promising than used alone.